Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Decidedly Vanilla Season 5. It is episode 18 and in this episode we're going to be building up a lot of proper villager infrastructure, getting ourselves a nice villager breeder built up, a villager trading system, a villager sorting system, maybe even a villager killing system. Ooh, ha, ha, ha. That'll be fun. <laughs> uh, but what I'm working on right now is just like the spiral staircase heading up to the second floor from the first floor, just kind of mining it out so we know how much room it takes up. Uh, we're actually gonna have one of these on either side of this, and I'm kind of just using like a basic circle as my template, and it's actually working out pretty well. Uh, but the reason why I'm working on this first is that uh, this way I know exactly how much room, or approximately how much room this is gonna take up. That way when we go to build a sorting system in here, it doesn't you know, get messed up later when we need to build and decorate our staircase heading up here. So just kind of getting this all mapped out first, figuring out all the details and plans for this upper level, which is very, very ugly, but that's fine. I want to get everything functional and then we can worry about decoration as always. We really need to do a lot of decoration around the base. It's overdue. <laughs> uh, but I guess speaking of things in this room, we actually already have one thing in here and, uh, might not look like much, but this is a villager holding pen. We got a slime block in there so that when they drop in from the sky, they don't take too much damage. And there were some villagers in here. I'll give you one guess what happened to them. No, I didn't murder them. No, I didn't sell them as slaves. They got eaten by some zombies. A zombie dropped in through the ceiling. Apparently, there were two holes in the ceiling. I only patched up one of them. And uh, yeah, that was all the good villagers that we had. All the guys that I was going to put in this trading hall over here, all the, you know, librarians and all the farmers and all the guys that I actually wanted to keep. <laughs> they all got eaten. It was, it was terrible. Um, but luckily, I didn't put all the good villagers in here, so we still have our mending librarians, and we still have a couple other guys, but most of the guys that we wanted to keep got eaten, which is not a great thing. It's not great at all. <laughs> So if you guys saw the last episode, you will know that we did a quintuple wither fight, five withers versus me underground and no cheeky business, just find them like a man. <laughs> that was a really fun battle. I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. Check it out if you haven't seen it. But at the end of that episode, we actually built up this extremely efficient villager breeder of doom. Oh, hi, there's a creeper. That's not good. Um, this thing has currently got 20 villagers in it and we need 40 villagers in it. So it's only about halfway done. Uh, we only got it about halfway done in the last episode because it just, it takes a very long time to get the villagers in here. You got to prep their inventories, you got to um, cart them from like a hundred something blocks away. I think it's time that we actually finish up our villager breeder, and this is just going to take a while. It took me about two hours to get these 20 or so villagers in here, and uh, yeah, it's kind of a pain. So I think I'm just going to come back when it's done. Insert giant jump cut here. We have done quite a bit of work. It is now quite a while later. Uh, I guess I'll just quickly run you through what we got going on. So we have all of these good or presumably possibly good villagers in here that we might be putting into our trading hall, depending on if they have good trades. We also have about 30 or so villagers left over at our old villager breeder that we need to deal with. And other than that, the entire villager breeder is now done. All of these guys are in here. They are good to go. That took about another two hours. Uh, they're all prepped. All of them have their inventories filled with stuff. Uh, we just need to actually put in about 40 stacks of potatoes and then they will all start to breed and all of them will have a stack of food. It'll be amazing. We'll probably get to that by the end of this episode, which will be lovely. We've also done quite a bit of stuff inside of the base as well. Uh, let's just seal that back up and let's check out what we got going on here. Okay, so we have quite a bit going on over here. The first thing that is right in front of us is the villager sorting machine. Basically, what's going to happen here is we're going to press a button. A villager is then going to be requested from this back holding cell area, which will only contain adult villagers. And then that's going to drop them in through the top right here. We can then trade with them. If we like their trades, we can then press the green button right there and that will send them over to the right side over here. As you can see, the minecart will travel over to the right side. Uh, so what we're going to have over here is kind of a villager staging area. That way we can decide where exactly we want them to go in this villager trading hall, which is really ideal because I like to have everything very organized, have all the librarians in a row, you know, stuff like that. And uh, that's really going to help with that. So it's, it's going to take them out of their minecart at some point, probably before we send them into the villager trading hall and then recycle the minecart over there. 
And then if you don't like their trades, uh, what you can do is go ahead and press the red button and then that's gonna take them over to this side over here, take them out of their minecart, and then also send their minecart back into that dispenser to grab a new villager. Um, and then we're gonna send them to a bad place and do bad things with them. <laughs> we're gonna be getting some use out of our bad villagers that we do not like. And that is pretty much it. There's still a lot of work to be done here. Uh, although we do have a few basic systems in, like we can uh, get villagers out of there and kind of just send them either way. But we need to get a lot more work done. I think the first thing that we're going to work on is getting the... Uh, hmm. I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? Why is this a thing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I I love Minecraft. Minecraft is lovely. <laughs> All right, so it is now about an hour or so later. I don't even really know. Haven't been keeping track of time, but I've been just having fun setting up all these different systems, and it kind of looks like a lot of spaghetti back here, doesn't it? Uh, ignore this. This is just ideas at the moment. But we got in the detection line for villagers, literally just a tripwire and a redstone line going into that lamp, telling us when we got some adults to sort through. And then we also got this button in place right here. So we can press that button, get a minecart shot out to actually, you know, give us a villager to sort through. That actually took a little bit longer than you might expect, even though it is literally just a redstone line and like this. Uh, the reason being is that a pulse from an observer would not activate a dispenser facing to the side and that really confused me for like a long time i had to actually uh you know spend about 15 minutes just getting this stupid one redstone line in ridiculous turns out if you place it underneath the rail then it actually works anywho uh so right now we're going to be working on the bad guy line so villagers that we don't want are going to be going on this rail they're going to come up into here and then they're gonna meet this activator rail. They'll be shot out onto this block, drop down below and push that way. And then the block will reset, ready for the next guy to come through. And then the minecart is gonna go this way and do a little bit something fun. So it's gonna go this way. It's going to hit the cactus and then go into this dispenser. And what I'm thinking of doing to actually get this minecart back into that dispenser over there to, you know, actually grab a new villager is shoot it through the system. <laughs> so we're gonna drop it out right here and it's just gonna flow into a hopper in the corner over there. Uh, that's actually gonna save us like quite a few hoppers and quite a bit of hassle actually. And uh, it's, it's a little bit fun as well. So uh, we need to grab ourselves a couple repeaters. There they are, so repeater. Uh, we're just gonna put this on a fair bit of delay. Maybe that'll work. And did we grab our minecart out? We did, cool. So let's just place a minecart down there. That'll go, hit the wall bounce back and it should come up here boom boom and it did not get shot out hmm well i guess we don't technically need it to be shot out because that would just kind of complicate this system so what i think we'll do is it just leave one minecart in here permanently and then whenever another minecart comes along into the system it'll shoot out the first one see there we go boom goes into that dispenser and then the next one We'll just be sitting in this dropper. So yeah, I guess that works. And technically then we wouldn't need uh, these to be on Vortex. We could just have there be one of those. And we could technically just like replace that. I think I just lost that repeater to the cactus. RIP repeater. So we're gonna go ahead and try this out as if we were a villager. So let's hop into this minecart, press the button. Oh no, we're a terrible janky villager with wonderfully terrible trades. And we actually got dropped off in here. Wonderful, that's awesome actually. Uh, I might go ahead and replace that with like an upper slab. So hopefully that works as well. And then I'm thinking, let's go ahead and grab ourselves a flint and steel water bucket. Boom, and boom, and boom. And that should go ahead and push all of our villagers into the nether. We are, we're gonna have a couple pistons right here just to uh, maybe not send them to the nether in case, I don't know, just as a safety. And then once they're in the nether, we're going to do some fun things with them. That's going to be a whole different project. Uh, so that's more or less how we're going to be dealing with all of our bad villagers. I went ahead and put in an extremely ugly spaghetti redstone line to power this redstone lamp. I mean, I hate it, but it's just about the only thing that we can really do. 
Unless we want to raise it up into the ceiling, but either way, it's going to be disgusting red sunlight. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I'm kind of working on how we're going to have our staging area for the good villagers. So let's check out what we got going on. Let's place a minecart into that area. Boom. Press the green button and you'll see that the minecart comes up into this thing right here. We can then, I guess, further trade with them if we want. But once we're ready to send them into the trading hall, we can just bump them going this way and then they will go in there and go to where we want them to go and that's pretty much it so this thing can handle two villagers at once so let's try that out real quick just minecart green button that one will go right there boom and then minecart green button the next one will go into this one actually a pretty decent little like trading hall setup uh there's not really like a technical like way to like get the villagers out besides like pushing them to the next area but it does kind of work it does kind of work if you're in a tight spot for a really simple trading hall i guess you can do it but this is more just for like a a cheap temporary way to stage them while we can also sort out some other villagers and then we can send two guys at a time into our trading hall to get them where we want to go uh not a completely necessary step but it's something that i think will come in handy in the future so the next thing that we need to do is kind of figure out how we're going to get these guys from this minecart position into our trading hall. Some brain thinking and brain thonking has happened. So I had to mess around with these like rail lines quite a bit, but right now we have uh, basically a system that will take the villagers from this pos this position right here, words, words are hard, send them up through this spaghettified rail, send them around and then activate to rail them right there. They'll drop out right here. Apparently it's daytime, I hear a bunch of zombies burning. <laughs> and then send it into a cactus. So there's gonna be like a zombie pigman standing right here, which will scare all the villagers to go this way. It's gonna be like another one right here and then that'll scare them to go this way. And then they'll be down here and stuck in this trading hall. Now villagers are a little bit taller, so they'll be stuck on this trap door. And I think I have to break that block to get out of here, cool. And that should reset, perfect, lovely. I like this design a lot. So. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of a system similar to how we're doing over there for our minecart returns So I think I'm gonna run a couple hoppers right here have a dropper right here and then have somewhere a uh, Detector rail to power it and then we're gonna shoot that minecart right into this room So that it kind of flows towards the center over there and then have a hopper <laughs> a hopper right there to pick it up and that's going to be kind of cheeky. And that's going to save us quite a few hoppers and quite a bit of just extra spaghetti back here. Because my god, in metric tons of spaghetti. It's, it's, it's a spaghetti festival. Seriously, it's too much spaghetti. <laughs> okay, so this is actually like extremely lucky on two fronts. First of all, this detector rail right here powers this dropper. Not entirely sure how, if it's powering the hopper and then powering it. Or if it's powering it with quasi. I don't really care, but... If we put, and no, okay. The, oh my God. Could have been way worse, could have been way worse. Don't ever have a water bucket on your hot bar. Uh, geez, dang it, that just ruined everything, didn't it? Anyway, I'll fix that in a second. <laughs> uh, I guess you get a little bit lucky and get a little bit unlucky. So yeah, this powers this. If we put an item into there, not the water bucket, put that over there, and then put a hopper or put a cart right there, boom. There's only one hopper in there now. Put another cart there, and boom. I think it just shot out the other cart, because it picked it up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, put another cart there. Boom, the hopper is now gone. You guys get the point. Uh, but the where the place that we're really lucky is that it's shooting into this block right here, and then the items are kind of floating up, and then they're going this way, which is lovely. Uh, apparently that's west, so apparently they prioritize going west over going east, so that is perfect. Uh, Cause otherwise the system would be a little bit more complicated. <laughs> but what we need to do now is actually go ahead and get the hoppers down in this area and then that'll be our minecart recollection system done for this side of the trading system. Oh, this kind of looks pretty cool. I'm kind of a fan of that. So it is now the next day and I've just been working on tidying up this system, making sure that everything is actually properly functional. I haven't tested it with an actual villager and the minecarts yet, but we'll get to that in just a minute or two. 
Uh, but as it stands, we can request villagers. The good guys will go into here. Their minecarts will return to the dispenser. We can request a bad villagers or just, you know, decide which villagers are bad. They'll go over here and just kind of sit in this cell and the minecarts will return to there as well. And this has been a pretty fun little project. I've never quite seen anything like this done in survival before, but it's super useful. Like, I'm pretty happy about this. <laughs> uh, what we actually need to do now is head over to the nether and kind of set up our systems that we're going to have over here. So I had to move around the portal because it was linking to our main ones. So now we have it actually linking up to its own portal. It's kind of close to this one, but that's perfectly fine. I think it's far enough away that it shouldn't be a problem. And we're going to send our bad villagers into like a holding cell over here. And then we're going to have a little bit of a guy. So let me get some work done and you guys will see what I'm talking about. Why are these guys so reluctant to leave the water? Come on, dude. Come on. Don't run away from me. I want you in a boat. Come on. I know you can get into the boat. Come on. Stop being so reluctant. And look, your friend is even here. He even wants to get into the boat. Come on. Get into the boat, fella. Come on, fella. Come on, dude. Come on, bro, man. Come on, friend. Get into the boat. <laughs> I need your help. Get into the boat, dude. Or at least get out of the water or something. Oh, my God. There we go. Finally. It takes forever to get these guys out of the water. We're going to take you. Not, not right there. No, no, no. Come on. Come on. Get into the boat. Thank you. Appreciate you. Love you, bro. Hey, there you are. Come on, Derp. Come on, Derp. Get into the boat. Thank you. Oh, you're so cute. I love it. <laughs> All right, so let's check out what we got going on here. So we have ourselves a drowned over here just because we can. Because, you know, why not? It's a drowned. They're new. I'm having fun playing with those guys. A little bit of a pain to get out of the water, but... That's fine. Uh, so all of our bad villagers are going to come through this nether portal right here. And if they don't run off immediately because of these trap doors, and then there's a baby zombie pigman right there, which should have enough line of sight to them to scare them off of that platform. And then they will be down in here. So a couple things are going to happen in here. One, we have a drowned over there. Currently got some blocks in its face, so it shouldn't be able to attack anything. Uh, it can't attack me, so that's a good sign. And once there's enough of them in here, they should be, you know, all bouncing around. You know, they shouldn't be able to run away from this guy, essentially. So once we have a ton of guys, what we can do is we can flick this lever. This guy will now be able to attack everyone in here. See, boom, he can attack. Wonderful. And he only actually needs to convert one uh, villager in this area before just all hell breaks loose and all of them convert to zombies <laughs> and then once they're all converted to zombies we can slay them and try and get ourselves some zombie villager heads because uh you know why not or if we don't want to uh get zombie villager heads we can just slay the villagers themselves and try and get some villager heads away from anywhere where we will uh, affect our villager reputation so this is pretty wonderful i'm a fan of this little system uh, it'll be a hot second until we can actually use it but i'm not too worried about that it's gonna be wonderful once we do put it to some use and i actually have some plans for a couple modifications that we're gonna make to our overworld system to send even more villagers here <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the last project for this episode is actually going to be getting all of our villagers from our old breeder into this system. I had a staircase. Here it is. <laughs> uh, I, I have a hard time finding my way around this place now. Uh, but yeah, so we need to get all of these villagers in this cell right here. Uh, these are all the possibly good villagers that we might want to put into our trading hall. We need to get them into our sorting system. And we also need to set up a system where we can get all of the villagers from our other breeder uh, over yonder that way. So I'm thinking what we're going to do is make a little bit of a hole and then just kind of drop them into this water system right there. And then from there, they will flow into our unsorted adult villager pen. And that shouldn't be too hard to set up, honestly. All right. So we now officially have all of our villagers into our proper base from the old base except like four there's still some in our actual hobbit hole that we need to get over here but i'll probably do that on live stream because ah that just sounds like fun project fun grindy project anyway so i got all the potatoes that i can muster i really need to go afk at the uh, skeleton farm some more because i have no more bone meal so we're just gonna kind of drop these in here and hopefully 
people start breeding. It looks like they all got picked up by the time they got to here, so that's wonderful. Uh, we're just going to drop in a couple more stacks, and these guys should start to breed. I think we need to flick a lever, and can I reach that from down here? I can. Wonderful. So, hopefully, if all is well, we should be seeing some hearts. Possibly, hopefully? Maybe? Let's throw in some more potatoes. When in doubt, throw in more potatoes. Okay. Everyone's got some food on like this side. I need like another 40 stacks of potatoes, but hey, we got some hearts <laughs> Finally, yes, people are breeding amazing amazing. It actually works That's awesome. Can we see some babies flowing? Down here at the bottom, maybe just a couple. Yes, we got our first babies. That's awesome. Oh, that's amazing I yeah, wow, I just need to get a lot more potatoes in this thing and we will be doing wonderful on the villager situation. This is awesome. So happy about this. Well, I think that's a pretty good note to end off today's episode on. These guys in here are breeding, but they're from our old breeder, so they're going to have stuff in their inventories anyway. And I think the babies have dropped down into here. Yes, they have. Wonderful. We got a nitwit and a butcher. That is like the two best villagers you can ever have. <laughs> uh, I guess before we end off this one, let's test out this system real quick. So press the button, give me a villager, will ya? And hey, we got a villager, cool. He's gonna go up into there, a little bit slow. We might need to add some more power rails. This guy is a farmer. We're gonna send him to the green side and he should pop up over here. Yes, cool. Let's press the button again, get ourselves another villager. Uh, looks like we got ourselves, hopefully not a cleric. It's a librarian. Cool. What's this guy got? I already traded with him. He's got flame. He's got some other random cool stuff. Send them to the green side. I really just want to test out the red side. Give me a okay, there we go. Now we got a cleric. This guy is terrible to the red side with you. Let's see how this functions over here. Goes, gets dropped up, goes into there. Wonderful. The minecart gets shot back into there. Awesome. I need to put some more glass right here, but all of this stuff is fully functional. It is amazing. Uh, looks like the guy went to the nether. Oh no, I didn't flip this down. Well, whatever. He's in our kill chamber in the nether. That's awesome. This system is fully functional. I am super happy about this. We got a massive amount of progress done today. Hope you guys all enjoyed this episode. Please do leave a like if you did. Maybe subscribe to the channel if you guys are new here. As always, thank you all for the support. I'll see you down in the comment section and in the next one. And then there was silence.